First Kings chapter 11. But, here's a terrible but in the Bible. King Solomon loved many strange women outside of Israel. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, that's the first, Egyptian. Women of the Moabites. Now they're relatives by lot, but they're not Israelites. Ammonites, they're relatives by lot, but they're not Israelites. Edomites, that's Jacob's brother, but it's not Israelites. Sidonians and Hittites. Hittites were supposed to be gone, destroyed. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart. After their gods, Solomon claved unto these in love. So, in love, he violated what God said. Love that always fulfills the desire of God. It can turn you away from God. Your love is to be God first. Others next. You last. That's joy. So, David's heart was toward God. Solomon's heart is toward himself. He spent more time building his house than he did the Lord's house. He had 700 wives. I don't know why you need 700 wives. It's unheard of. And people say, you know, the anniversaries, the birthdays. And, yeah. And even that, that Pharaoh's daughter that he had, he had built her a house. Say, listen, you can't live in my city. You stay over there. So when it says wives and that, he's come on to him because the marriage definition of marriage is when flesh joins flesh. But it's not an intimate relationship. He can't hold that many. As far as the marriage bed, Hebrews 13, I think it is, 12 or 13. Princesses and 300 concubines. And we've seen before with David, that's that's a marriage. That's a wife. And in this country, it's illegal. And the Mormons have tried to do this for their sexual desires and their sexual lusts of their leaders. Who was killed in prison by the husbands of the wives that he stole. That, oh, we have multiple wives, we can have children and help God populate some planet somewhere. That's ridiculous. Now, nowhere in the Bible do you see, see God with David, Solomon, and the rest of the kings. Where I agree with you, I fulfill you completely, what you're doing. No, he never approved of it. But he allowed them. David's wives and the children gave David trouble. Absalom tried to assert the authority. Uh, Abnon tried to have his way with his sister. Solomon, his wives are actually going to take him away from God. When you read about Paul in the church, it says one wife, one husband. It's that simple. Multiple wives, just multiple troubles. You're going to have a woman... Who's going to be less loved than the other. And that's the story of Hannah. Hannah was depressed and upset. Being the second wife. And the first wife having all the children. And her being barren. Sarah. Well here take Hagar. Well now that Hagar's had a, trouble, had a child. Now there's, there's adversary. There's fighting. There's war. Jacob. Now, that wasn't his fault. He ended up with the wrong wife, thanks to Laban. But he ends up with, with Leah and with Rachel. And they're battling it out. And then he gets two more wives. The proper way is one wife. And the proper way is to love God before you love your wife. And love God before you love your husband. And if you're going to love God and do what his word says, you will be faithful in the relationship. Solomon has left the word of God. He has left the commandments of God. And the mess he gets into. 
I just can't picture seven hundred. Seven, not seven hundred. For it came to pass when Solomon was old. David was old and they got this woman to keep him warm, but there was no relations. That his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Now, like David, his father, with multiple wives, David was never turned away from God by his wives. Because David's heart was worked and loved and totally upon God himself. Solomon figured, hey, my dad can do it, so can I. But you ain't got the right heart, Solomon. And you sure went overboard than what David had. I think David had a dozen wives, is that much? You married the wrong wives. They're all strange, outlandish, Ezra says. And his heart was not perfect to his fullest with the Lord his God. Now God had given him wisdom. He said, God, I need wisdom. Here you go. Queen of Sheba comes out. Those two harlots with the baby come out. But he had no knowledge of what these women could have done to him. He ought to have known by the scriptures that if God says for me not to do it, I ought to not do it. And when you read the book, and Lord willing, if we ever get to it equally as these again, it is Solomon writing, I did whatever I wanted to do. If I wanted it, I got it. If I wanted to build it, I built it. If I wanted it, I did. If I wanted to have 700 wives, I did. And how did I end up with all these gods? Because you defile the word of God. And that's what? After other gods, after other gods, his heart was not perfect to the fullest with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. There's a big difference between the two. You say, well, why did God with David in adultery and murder? Because David's heart was right with God. And when David repented, it was true repentance. It was definitely a heart broken to what he'd done to God, not just Bathsheba and Uriah. And now Solomon is protected by God because by God talking to David, he says, listen, if, if your son ch uh, goes against me, I'm going to chastise him, but he's still my son. God spoke to, to David about Solomon and he's not going to not ever be my son, but man, if he does wrong, we're going to see it in this chapter. Correction. For Solomon, now here we go. For Solomon had at, went after Ashtoreth. Now mark that in the Bible. Because Ashtoreth is alias. She has a few names, if I may give them. Estar. Now Estar you would pronounce as Easter. That's the God that has many breasts. That is sex worship. You would also find this Asterisk as a name as the Roman Catholic Mary. Asterisk is the mother of Baal. The mother of God. And Solomon's worshiping her. That's the goddess. That's the first time that word shows up. Goddess. And has to do with Asterisk. Of the Zidonians. They're interesting people to read about in the Bible. And after Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites. There's another false god. Two. Two wrong ones. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. That's why, that's why God said, David, you're a man of my own heart. Upon you, I'm going to build. And as far as that crime of murder and adultery, your heart is right with me. You, you love me. All have sinned. Solomon, Solomon writes, all have sinned. But the heart of David. And there's a thing to sinning that I'm going to sin because I can do it. David was at the wrong place. Yes, he sinned. 
And when he, his sin came to its knowledge, his, man, his heart broke for the Lord. Solomon's probably been told often, what you're doing is wrong. But he kept doing it. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemish. That's another false god. He left the high place. He remember he met the Lord in the high place. He fell asleep. The Lord met him. And then he builds the temple and he's offering the sacrifices upon the brazen altar. He asks God if I can have another spot because there's so many offerings. At this place we can offer the offering because there's so many. God says go ahead. That was no more high places. Until he starts marrying these wives. Abomination of Moab. That's Lot's son. In the hill that is before Jerusalem. So here is the mighty temple for God Jehovah. Where my name shall forever be. It's high above. It's on a mountain. And just before that place. There's another building there. And that building is for Chemish. Erected on a hill. On a hill. So everyone can see it. It's not as high as God's house. I mean, I still have God on, on the show. But I got other gods higher in my life. God's still there. That is before Jerusalem. And Molech. That's the God that you take your children and you open up by pulleys and by ropes and by chains. And into the belly, which is a furnace, babies are put into the arms of Molech and thrown into that belly and burned alive. And they beat, they beat drums as loud as they can so you don't have to hear your baby crying. And that ba they may not be into a belly of a god with fire, but it's happening. And I just saw another video the other day in India. I know of a, of a missionary told me there's this elephant god that rolls down the street and they throw their babies into it. Under it. Under the wheels. I, I saw the other day that in India there's a high place. I, I don't know what kind of building it is. And they throw the babies down off that high place onto something. I couldn't tell what it was. And the baby survived. Okay, the gods were blessing that child. If it didn't survive, oh well. Oh well. Of Moab, I mean, excuse me, uh, Moab, the abomination of the children of Ammon. That's the other son of Lot. And likewise, did he, for all his strange wives, you mean 700 gods? 300 false worships? Not one time does it say he married a Jewish woman. And burnt incense. And sacrifice unto other gods. And God did not call fire down and kill him and destroy his kingdom. God didn't kill him. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Because his heart, Solomon's heart, was churned from the Lord God of Israel. Which had appeared unto him twice. And had commanded him concerning the thing which he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord had commanded. Now here comes something interesting. We're going to look at these. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon. This is three times. Verse 9 says God appeared unto him twice. Verse 11. This is the third time. And we'll see in a moment. For as much as this is done of thee. This is what you've done Solomon. Look at all these buildings you're building. You already got a house to your wife, Pharaoh, the daughter of Pharaoh. You already got your house bit longer than my house. You got a forest in the, Le uh, in the forest of Lebanon. You got a place for this God. You got a place for Chemish. You got the high places over here for these gods. Solomon has began in Jerusalem, and it gets worse by Jeremiah. He's building churches on every street corner. And Jeremiah says, on every street corner, 
There's a church or temple to some God. Things haven't changed. And if you got asterisk, the woman that has the multi press, you got buildings that are steepled for the male deity of sexual worship. That steeple on your church is an emblem of paganism for the male penis. And many churches will go all out to replace or get a steeple on their church, and they don't know what church history is. We will have Easter, which is Estar, and you'll go out searching for eggs, which is sexual worship of the woman. And chocolates. Chocolate is a very aphrodisiac for sex. And then when you send your children in a Baptist courtyard, in a Baptist grounds to go searching for eggs, it's so innocent. You just might as well call your children sperm. Because there's only one thing that goes looking for eggs, that's sperm. And as a result, as sex. And then you got a God over here where, okay, if you have an illegitimate baby, an illegitimate baby that you should not have, just give it to Molak, he'll take care of it. Today we call that abortion. And that had been practiced in the Catholic Church among the priests having relationships with the nuns. And the nun, uh oh, we got to get rid of that baby because it's against the church. And then you have the priests having fornication with males, males with males. And God says, Solomon, you are involved with that wickedness. You have set a foundation that Jeremiah will say there's a church on every street corner. But we have God. The churches have God, and we have been in many churches where they got other gods. They got that Christmas tree. They got the, oh, it's trunk or tree. Or it's clowns, or it's, you know, Tootsie Rolls, or it's bounce houses, or it's... Fall what's that? Fall, Fall festivals. BBS. People don't know. BBS. Now, there was a time in the church history, which would be proper, when you're done with your harvest at the end of the year, and you would bring your fruits and you would have a fellowship at the church. That was it. And everybody eat, you know, John Brown's corn, Farmer Smith's uh, pumpkins and all that. But when you come into the paganism, I forget which church age, much marriage. You bring it into, just as Solomon had. And God says, for as, <clears throat> for as much as this is done of thee, that thou hast not kept my covenant, and my statue, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee. I'm going to rip the kingdom right off you. And what he means rend here, he's going to divide it into two. It's going to be a north and a south. And I will give it to thy servant. And we'll see later on tonight, starting, Lord willing, <coughs> next couple nights, Jeroboam. Notwithstanding, in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake. Look at that. Man, was it for your father? I rend it right now under you. But I will rend it out of the hand of thy son, Jer uh, Jeroboam, Rehoboam, excuse me, Rehoboam, his son. How be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom. But will give one tribe to thy son for David, my servant's sake. That would be Judah. That would be Benjamin. That Benjamin has been swallowed to Judah. I think it's Simeon too. Simeon has been swallowed. And for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Man, it wasn't for David. It wasn't for the fact is I put my name in Jerusalem. Solomon, this would have been the end of Israel. You better thank God for his words and his oath that he made to people as Abraham. Isaac and Jacob into David. He was angry enough to get rid of Israel because of Solomon. And when people say God is all finished with Solomon, we would not have a chapter called Rehoboam. We would not have a chapter called Jeroboam if God was all finished with Because at this moment right here, God is angry. Alright, so 
And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. Now keep your place there. Let's go to chapter 3, verse 5. Chapter 3, verse 5. This is number 1. Say number 1 of what? Of 3. Chapter 3, verse 5 of 1 Kings. And in Gibeah, the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night. This is the first time that God showed up to, uh, to Solomon. In verse 14 of chapter 11, this is the first time that he sends an adversary unto Solomon. He's going to have three of them. And we'll look real quick at all three times. All the three times that Solomon's been visited by God, he sends three adversaries. You had three chances, boy. I'm going to give you three advances across your butt. You say, what do you mean by that? I'm going to get three rods. Because you wouldn't obey me. Hey, Dad, the Eden night. Uh-oh. That's one of the gods he has. The children of Eden. I'm saying the Eden night. They hate you. They hate Israel. They are an enemy of his brother Jacob. For it came to pass. This is this is the story. When David was in Edom, and Joab the captain of the host was going up to bury the slain, there was a battle. After he had smitten every male in Edom. Ooh, ooh. So Hadad has a grudge against Joab for killing killing all the males. What a perfect guy to get. Get someone that has a grudge. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. Okay? That Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants unto him. So here's a guy that got away. Now he's got he's got an axe to grind. What a perfect man for God to say, I want you to I want you to get somebody a hard time in Israel. Really? Israel? Yes. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. And Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites, so there's more than one, of his father's servants unto him, and go into Egypt. Egypt. God told Israel not to go. Hadad being yet a little child. So his father and his family would have been killed. They rose out of Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he gave him a house, a point of victuals, food, and gave him land. That's what he did to Israel and Joseph. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, like Joseph. So that he gave him a wife, the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tahaphanes, the queen, like Joseph. <laughs> this is almost a carbon copy of the life of Joseph, but it ain't going to turn out like Joseph. It's going to turn out like the book of Exodus all over again. Why? Look, here's his Edomite. All right, Solomon, you want to have a god of Edom? No problem. I'll send you an Edomite. You want to marry a, a, a Pharaoh's daughter? How about, a, how about another guy that's married to Pharaoh's daughter? You want to clash? Edom and Egypt. How's that, Solomon? Be not deceived. God's not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also. Now remember, now remember, this Edomite has had the men of his family and the men of his city killed. He's not coming happy and graceful. He's coming with anger and vengeance. And the sister of Tanathis bare him Gibbah, Gibbah, his son, whom Tophanes weaned in Pharaoh's house, almost like Moses, and Gibbah, forgive me with these names, was Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh, like Moses. Man, God is giving Solomon, by what's going on here, he's giving him a, a, a little history lesson of the Jews. But for bad. 
And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his father, he died, and that Joab the captain of the host was dead, Hadad said unto Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go into my own country. Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me? I've given you everything. That behold, thou seekest to go to thy own country. And he answered, Nothing. Howbeit, let me go. And in any way, let me go, because God wants me to go be a problem to somebody. I like it here. But God has called a heathen to go out, because it said an adversary unto Solomon. And God stirred him up another adversary, chapter 9, verse 2. Chapter 9, verse 2. The more revelation you get, and then turning from God is not healthy. Revelation 9, I mean, not, uh, 1 Kings 9, 2. That the Lord appeared on Solomon a second time. So, here's number two, adversary. Reason, Rezan, the son of Ilidad, which fled from his Lord, Hazardad, Hazardur, Hazardur, king of Zobia. And he gathered men unto him and became captain over a band. That's a group, an army. When David slew them at Zobeth, and they went to Damascus and dwelt therein and reigned in Damascus. All right, here's another group of people that David killed. They took off. Revenge. Revenge. You got two people who are angry with Israel because their families and their people were killed. And they're called an adversary against Solomon. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon. Besides the mischief that Hadad did, and God doesn't even mention what Hadad did. He doesn't even mention what Risen did. But man, they gave Solomon a hard time. And he abhorred, that means extreme hatred, Israel, and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now, that's, that's chapter 11, verse 11. Wherefore the Lord sent unto Solomon. That's the third time. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephorite of Zerbia. Now, he's Jewish. Solomon's servant. He was working under Solomon. Whose mother's name was Zura. God wants to know what his mother's name is. And when we're going to start going with the kings. We're going to say. And this man. He was this age when he reigned. He reigned a certain amount of years. And his mother's name was. A widow woman. And he lifted up his hand against the king. He went against the king. He spoke against the king. He didn't like who the king was. So he had a problem with the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against King Solomon. Uh, the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. He was good. He was a warrior. Solomon seen the young man that he was industrious. I didn't check that might be I check that way. He made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at the time that Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shimlai, found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and had two and they two were alone in the field. Now, this is why Solomon got mad at him. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to the story of Jeroboam. We're going to end there. I introduced Jeroboam. But we're going to get into... The reason why Solomon had a problem with Jeroboam is this prophet comes up to him. And we'll talk about the prophecy and what goes on. Lord willing.